TikTok shop is blowing up right now. And in this video, I brought an expert. He's a good friend and he's cracked the code on TikTok shop. He actually drove a hundred million views on one TikTok account. And he's going to show you step-by-step -step all of his secrets in this video. I'm excited to have my very good friend, Andrew Morgans on the show. What's up, Andrew? What's up, Mina? Good to be here. Congratulations on you and the wifey. I haven't seen you since, so I can't wait to see you. Of course, bro. I mean, uh, you're going to be a prosper, right? Yes, sir. I love it, man. I love it. All right, bro. So let's get into it. I mean, you know, quick intro, right? Who's Andrew Morgans? What do you do? And then what's your strategy on TikTok shop? Yeah, I am the founder of a company called Martinology. We are a full service marketplace agency. So, you know, Walmart, Amazon, Target, anything marketplace like that, including TikTok shop, which is what we're talking about today. I've been in this space 13 years. You know, we have 40 or 50 brands under management from enterprise level all the way down to, you know, mom and pop shops trying to trying to be innovative and get online. So yeah, just been trying a lot of things the last 18 months to 24 months or so. Right after TikTok shop came to the US, we jumped on it and just wanted to get on the show. I know you and your shop are doing TikTok, TikTok shop as well. And with our Amazon background, I just think it'd be a fun conversation for other people to listen in on and hopefully get some tips for their own business. Yeah, I think you're definitely ahead of me when it comes to TikTok shop. You've been doing it for longer. We kind of just started. So I'm I'm excited to share my strategy, get your feedback on it. But OK, let's talk about TikTok shop. What are you doing there? Like, are you, you know, getting accounts like brands and then doing outreach to affiliates? Do you have some sort of affiliate network? Like, what's the deal there? Yeah. So uh, honestly, been leveraging a lot of my network, uh, my creator and freelancer network here in Kansas City. You know, we've been here 10 plus years now as a company in the community. I know a lot of creative, so I've actually been kind of leveraging that in addition to my own internal resources at Micnology. We have a small creative team, you know, more focused on, I would say, images, Amazon, A+, brand guides, things like that. But I've recently been pushing into video and into doing more content like that for different reasons. My strategy is this. I'll tell you exactly what we're doing right now. We are, when we onboard with a new brand, first, we are, depending on how many brands they're launching with. Sometimes it's two, sometimes it's three. Let's just say that it's one. Our first move is not to go get UGC creators if the brand is not starting at any kind of brand presence, at least on TikTok. So first it is, we're going to create the standard ourselves a bit, right? So what we're going to do with that is create, we're trying to create five to 10 videos that we can post organically and track which ones do well, see which ones engage and ultimately set the tone for the brand and the creators that will come after that. And then after we have that, we're picking some of the winners and we're running two to three weeks of really just getting that engagement right, trying to figure out what that audience is that's correct for the brand. And we're doing that to TikTok shop if set up or just straight to the D2C website. Okay, so sometimes TikTok shop can be a little tricky. We don't want people to get hung up. So we're going ahead and placing that pixel on their website so that we can start getting that audience correct. And then as we do that, we're also adding other pixels from Google, Meta, Facebook and IG, even Pinterest sometimes where we can retarget that audience for all the ones that don't convert, right? So it makes it like double valuable. So, you know, there's there's nuance to that, how you're sending the traffic, et cetera. But ultimately you're, you're running two to three weeks of ads, getting data, refining it. And then after that, you've got uh, the ability to create shop videos or regular TikTok or, you know, as Amazon agency, a lot of time we're sending traffic to Walmart or Amazon. So we're usually dividing some level of our strategy between those three. If I'm being honest, we want to kind of test all of them early on. But shop has been the easiest to convert, the easiest to track and the best for us in regards to TikTok traffic. So as soon as we can get that brand up and going, we're sending a lot of that traffic that we've now been spending two, three, four weeks on getting refined and then starting to send that to shop. Cool. And so I love that you're basically starting out by setting up the account, right? When it comes to like the level of content. So that's not something that we're doing. We're just kind of taking the account and then having a, a little bit of creatives and, and videos on there, not really following a standard, just making sure that people like think that the brand's legitimate, like nothing crazy. But I like that you're setting kind of like proofing the videos. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're not. We're just saying like, you know, if someone looks at this and they get a, a message from us, like, are they going to be like, this is a legit brand or not? So we're just getting like normal content. We're not being like, yo, like let's set the standard of content and then, you know, doing the outreach. So I like that you're doing that first. And then I love that you mentioned the pixel because that's also something that, you know, now got me thinking, I'm like, damn, I should go tell all of our clients to get their TikTok pixel set up on their website because you can start doing retargeting. So are you running TikTok ads? 
We are. We actually are. And this is just a little faster way. I wouldn't say it's almost like a train. So this is more like a race car. I feel like instead of like building that train, almost like SEO, where you, when you get a ton of organic creators and everyone's engaging with the brand and you're getting people wanting to create for the brand and you've got scale, you've got a ton of outreach, it can create momentum that is unheard of on TikTok right now. But from wanting to get up, proof concept, get results early on, we are running you know, those five to 10 pieces of content like we talked about first, getting a couple of those winners and then building ads around those and creating different variations of that same type of ad. And so that doesn't hold us up. So as we start to reach out to creators, we're able to show them some of the type of content we've been making that's working. We're able to kind of give them some examples now at this point. We're not reliant only on them. But we're taking everything that comes in and we're actually trying to take a little bit longer to find the creators that we feel like are creating the best videos for us. Truthfully, we were using, and I know that there's a million ways to skin a cat, so to speak, but we were using joint brands. The outreach just wasn't working for us. We were, we were having the clients, you know, pay for content and the videos we were getting back just weren't really bringing in the results like that. So we actually pivoted away from the outreach early on, try to set the tone and some examples of what's working, you know, as a team that oftentimes we're managing the brand on Amazon. So we kind of understand the brand. We're trying to get into it. Let's set the tone with the client and we're able to not make excuses really for UGC creators not coming through. We deliver early, which is like, I think getting success early is important so that you can build confidence and like build on that. And so if you're just like, really like, I think some brands and products are easy for creators to run with and others are like a little bit harder and you gotta be a little bit more creative in how you're bringing them to the market. So, you know, we're still learning. That's the best I can say is like, we're still learning as we go, but ultimately we were trying to get a little bit of success so that we can scale from there. I love it, man. And, and you're right. It is like TikTok shop is super new. I think both of us see the, the potential because you have content on a platform that people consume a shitload of content on. You have a, a very native shop, right? Where you don't have to go to Amazon. You don't have to sh check out on Shopify. And then they also make the checkout process incredibly easy. You can use Apple Pay. You can use PayPal, Google Pay, whatever, all that kind of stuff. So I see the potential. I, I'll tell you my strategy, right? So what we're doing is we're onboarding brands and then we're creating like a pitch message, right? It's saying something like, if you're a creator, say, hey, Andrew, I love your, your content. I think you would align uh, well with our brand. I'd love to send you the product for free and get you as part of you know our influencer network. Would you be open to that? From my end, I can guarantee you the highest commission. Right now, You know, on open collaboration, we're offering 15%. I can offer you up to 40%. You know, something that makes them feel special. They're like, yeah, I'm down. They order a sample. I approve it. And then we follow up and say, hey, how does it look? Do you like it? Whatever. And then we start working with them. But at the same time, I'm also trying to create a network of, of influencers for every brand. If I find two or three influencers that are crushing it, just kind of in, on the side, invite them privately to like a community and say, guys, you guys are doing amazing. We have a lot of brands that we can bring in. Let's all work together and, you know, kind of create that ecosystem and I'm just hoping like if, if in the first month I get, you know, 10 affiliates and the second 10, the third 10, the fourth 10, you know, six months in, I have 60 people creating 60 pieces of content. If they're only doing one a month, inevitably, even if they do two a month, that's 120 pieces of content a month, organic costs nothing. They probably enjoy doing it. They're creators. And I'm hoping like a few of them go viral and that's going to help sales on TikTok shop, but also the halo effect on Amazon, because, if, you know, like, let's say you get a few videos that do 500 K to a million. I mean, what would 2 million views on TikTok do for your sales on Amazon? At least move the needle by 10, 20%. So that's currently our strategy. And, and you know, like I said, like you said, we're we're learning. Uh, we haven't cracked it yet. Talk to me about KPIs. What are your KPIs that, that you're tracking? Yeah, I think um, I loved what you just said, by the way. And I do believe in the long game, that is the ultimate way to win, to be getting organic sales. I just think in some ways it's it's like easier, like on Amazon, if you're trying to get influencers, like having a product in stock, having it look great is a great way to people to say, yeah, I would love to promote that. It looks great. You know, the creators that have been working on it are great. So it's more so if you're doing your own brands, I feel like you have a longer runway to really be successful and can add that 10, that 10, that 10, that 10, that really compounds. 
And if you're an agency and you're charging for it, it can be important to move quick. So I think as you get that stable, you'll start to get these niches that are really, really powerful for you as a team that you can leverage, whether it's pet, whether it's fashion, whether it's supplements. And you just know you have five, six, 10, 15, 20 powerhouse creators in there that you can utilize when you need to. I think that's gold. So KPIs, honestly, there's a lot. If you're if you're an Amazon seller and you're coming in, you have different ones than if you're a TikTok shop seller, than if you're a, you know, a D2C or a Shopify website uh, seller. I think on Amazon, some of the stuff I'm checking is sessions, conversion rate, add to carts, brand performance. Like how often is our brand name getting searched? Are there certain terms around it like TikTok? Like maybe what the video is about. Something fun we're doing on Amazon is trying to run vertical videos similar to the TikTok ads that we're running on TikTok. So whenever they come into Amazon, they're looking for us. They feel comfortable, you know, landing on the pages, seeing maybe some of the same influencer in the ad or on the product page, if there's a bigger one to kind of create that funnel for them. It's already a little bit non-native. So if they're there, we're trying to be like, yeah, we're the one that was that was marketing you on TikTok, so to speak. If you're on the website, it's abandoned carts. It's obviously conversions, conversion rate, but looking at the traffic, seeing where it falls off in your funnel is important. So tracking each of those KPIs. Yeah, there's there's quite a few. If you're an agency and you're starting to do like build a creator stable, so to speak, and have these ones that you can go to, you have all these new KPIs that I think most people don't think about when it comes to really growing that, which is like making sure the product shows up on time, making sure they got it, making sure they're getting the scripts, making sure they're posting when they say they'll post, making sure it's on brand and not hurting the brand. You know, you can have uh, creators create a stink if you decide not to use their video and they can like leave bad reviews for you and different things. So there's like, you know, there's a lot of KPIs even within that new creator management, I think that are important for you as well, if you're going to execute consistently over time. I love it. And so if I'm a brand owner, like a, you know, someone who's selling on Amazon, 90, let's say 90% of my revenue comes from Amazon. You know, what am I looking at in terms of KPIs? Am I looking at like views? What you mentioned is great, right? You mentioned like, are there sessions going up on Amazon? Uh, you know, is the brand search going up on Amazon? So that's, that's cool. But like, I feel like that's second order KPIs. What's first order KPIs on TikTok that I'm looking for. Uh, and let's also talk about TikTok shop, right? Because I as a brand that's expanding, I'm probably setting up my TikTok shop and trying to, you know, create the content on TikTok so that I either convert on TikTok shop or, you know, get the halo effect on Amazon. So what KPIs on TikTok am I looking for? Yeah. So I think on TikTok, especially if you're running ads, this is a little bit differently than if you're just posting organically. You know, if you're posting organically, you're trying to see creators that are portraying the essence of your brand, you know, they're not selling deodorant and using it as foot scrub or something like you want to make sure they're using your product correctly and not showing people wrong. So making sure your creators are creating good content. Um, you're looking for click through rate, you're looking for engagement, comments, shared saves, you know, you're trying to include keywords in those videos. So you're trying to see some of that relevance show up if you're able to get there on Amazon, you know, it's sales at the end of the day, you're looking to see sales climb without all the other metrics taking a hit. So if you can see organic keyword ranking increase as well, which should be a big one. Um, that halo effect is a is a thing we, we really dial down ads on Amazon for a brand neck under under a 1000 per month. And um, so really just covering branded search for them, which was little at the time, and just turned on TikTok shop ads, we saw you know, a two to one ROAS, we were spending about five grand a month in ad spend. So we saw a two to one ROAS and we saw Amazon sales growing without really running PPC there. So, you know, you can pick and choose and make sure you're building both. I think on the TikTok shop side, an additional benefit in KPI is, is watching your email list grow. A lot of people spend a lot of money to grow email lists and here you're collecting emails. You're able to keep engaging with your customer, especially if you're selling like a variety of products and you can keep cross-selling or upselling. Um, that's invaluable. I mean, it's, it's absolutely invaluable, especially if you're an Amazon seller. I know plenty that have spent, you know, thousands and thousands trying to build an email list. So how, how do you build an email list? I, I'm glad that you brought that up because I'm not familiar with how, how can you build an email list using TikTok? So as your customer's information comes into Shopify, right? If you have a Clavio or you have a MailChimp or you have one of these in place, these TikTok shop customers get, you know, segmented out as, as shop customers. And so you're able to add them into your different mail delivery systems and ultimately start treating them as customers that have come in from TikTok. And you should, maybe if you're getting them from website versus TikTok versus other areas, maybe they're in separate buckets, maybe they're all in the same bucket, but, you know, giving them a welcome series. You know, if you're selling on Amazon, be like, wow, welcome to my shop. You know, we're also on Amazon. You're able to do all those types of things because it's not against TOS. So you're not trying to do any of that incentivization that we know we should stay away from, but Anything that's just straightforward, engaging with the customer is, is good to go. Awesome. And then can you walk me through some things that didn't work for you? You know, for me, I, I think it's a little bit too early to share anything because 
we're still very early, but I think you have more experience than we do. So what didn't work for you? So whenever we were a smaller team here working on it, we were creating the videos ourselves and we were like, we were getting the results we wanted. We were posting a lot organically and taking the best of those and going and posting and running ads. And we weren't rushing it. We were really kind of taking our time to get the videos right and really create creative, valuable videos. And that was working. Well, then we got a couple of clients plus our brands and started adding some more because we were getting excited about the results. And we're like, well, we can't create all these videos and we need to scale. So all of a sudden, our simple plan that had creativity involved now needed to manage all these KPIs of these creators, delivery dates, getting approval on the on the budget ahead of time, you know, making sure they get the product, make sure it's on brand, then the brand's wanting to see what they're paying for at a level of that, right? If you're orchestrating the Spark ad on their post, what how are you guys executing on that? Who's tracking it? And it just became much bigger than us creatively making videos and having product on shop. Does that make sense? Yeah. And yeah, yeah. It was it was, I think what we really what we've really done wrong in the process was I'm not saying that's not a good process to do, to work with UGC and all of that, but it really is adding a level of complexity, I think, to what is TikTok shop when you're trying to build out that pipeline. And if you're not really set up for it, to be organized around it, I think you can lose your creativity, which is what was making it work in the first place. Yeah. And, and you know, I'm glad that you brought this up because there are two strategies, right? And I want to share this with everyone. There is one strategy, and I don't know if you've heard about this, but you will hire like, let's say eight to 10 creators. You'll get them on retainer. You're going to, you, you know, create some guidelines on how to create like really good content, you know, with, with like aspirations of going viral as many times as possible. And the, these eight people on payroll will constantly pump out content, one piece of content a day, every single day, because this is their, it's their job. They're on retainer, you know, like they, they probably have this with, let's say four or five brands and, you know, they're doing four or five videos a day. It doesn't, you know, it takes a few hours of their time and they're probably getting paid, you know, pretty well. And, it, you know, you have this team, they probably create their own accounts, like new accounts. Let's, let's call it like MMA Nutrition John. You know what I mean? Like just giving an example. And that's one strategy is, okay, eight people on payroll, you're guiding them. And you're like, listen, man, you're a creator. I'm giving you a little bit of freedom. Here's what we've seen work and just crank out the content. And, and you know, let's see if we can go viral. And then that will sell on TikTok shop, but also you know, do a halo effect on Amazon. That's one strategy. I believe Rob, the founder of the Genius brand and, and Top Shelf Grind, I believe he's doing that strategy with his own brand, Top Shelf Grind. What we're doing is a little bit different and it's, uh, you know, and also it's also kind of a little bit different from you is we're just saying, hey, if we can leverage all of these people that are creators, I mean, creators, what they do is they create. So they're kind of sitting there and they're like, what do I create? And I'm like, well, let me give you a few ideas, things, you know, products and brands that you would align with and give you all th these ideas. And not only that, instead of just making content and then getting that dopamine hit of like views, which it does nothing, you can't take that to the bank. Let me give you some commission. So if this shit goes viral, you're going to make more money in terms of revenue than the actual brand owner. And so like, I mean, think about it, right? If they're doing 40% commission, me and you know that our products make anywhere between 10 to, to 30, 35% profit uh, margin on a good day, right? So 10 to 35% profit margin, you know, we'd be lucky to make that kind of money on Amazon. Now you're yep. offering someone who's not going to do anything besides I'm just going to create content. And if it works and I sell stuff, I'm going to make more commission than the founder of the company or, or make more profit than the founder of the company. That's a good deal. So I love that there's you know, multiple strategies around TikTok. And the reason that I like it the most is because people are naturally living on that platform. No one, no yeah. one's living on Amazon. Amazon, it's like Whole Foods, bro. You come in, you buy the shit, you go out, right? It's very different than like, you know, you're hanging out at like Equinox or something. It's pleasure. And it's pleasure versus like work. You know, I think on Amazon, I, I'm doing work when I'm shopping. It feels like work. It doesn't feel like fun for me versus like, on TikTok, I might just want something to occupy my brain. And then all of a sudden I'm being entertained. I might be laughing at some stand-up comedy. I might be watching like prepper videos. You know, I might be watching Kansas City crimes. I don't know. I might be getting, you know, the educational side or the funny side, humor side. You know, there's a lot of different stuff there. And I think Amazon just doesn't have that. It just doesn't have that aspect. And one thing I wanted to add to the strategy that you guys are executing is also if you're an agency that's running Spark ads, if you're running ads, you know, there's a Spark ad is essentially you're putting advertising dollars for exposure behind the influencer's video. So instead of it coming out of the brand, it's it's Joe, you know, MMA Joe, 
he's posting and you're saying I'm, you know, you're going to send him a product and please create a video and you'll get 40% commissions, whatever. You might also say, I'm going to commit to $200 this week of a boost of your social media platform. You know, if, if your video gets to this many, uh, maybe views or engagements organically, like you can give them kind of incentives. And if it does, we're going to throw 200, we're going to throw 500 behind your account and, and get views from it. One, as the brand, you're getting more exposure Two, as the influencer and creator, they're getting 40% commissions, you're running ads behind it, and they're probably getting more followers as part of the deal with you, which I think is, is I mean, it's a home run, really, if you can find some great creators. I think really what it comes down to is some products are just harder to find great creators around than others. Yeah, I think that's that's the big thing, right? Like, guys, this is not going to work for everyone's brand. Uh, you know, it's going to be amazing for supplements, cosmetics, like whatever, like all this kind of, you know, even a selfie stick maybe. But like there's some stuff that's just it, it's not made for that platform uh, and it is what it is. And, you know, there's some stuff that you can't advertise on Facebook. Like, you know, maybe if you're super creative, you can advertise like uh, toilet paper or whatever. But like you can't advertise like plugs for your toilet or some something like that on, on Facebook. So let's wrap this up with a gift for everyone. What's a step-by-step? -step? Like I'm a brand, I'm coming to you, Andrew. And I'm like, bro, I want to, I want to take advantage of this. I know this is going to be big step-by-step. -step, tell me what I need to do. So I think it comes down to budget, everybody. Like that's the end of the day. Like, is your plan that you're going to do it yourself? I like to almost share examples as if you're doing it yourself versus you're hiring somebody else to do it. So you can really understand what you need to deliver if you're going to be successful at this. I drove 100 million views in three months with a, with a personal brand. We were really exploring. This is probably about 18 months ago. We were exploring an apparel brand that we built together. And before we dropped the product, we wanted to build up a community. Uh, it was a community of like young guys, probably like 16 to 30. You know, the club scene guy, the guys that want to be cool, talk to girls. We were kind of building a community like that. And I knew with my Amazon experience, anytime we're building a community up, uh, anytime you're launching a product, building a community first is important. So at first we were just kind of testing, but ultimately, I don't know if you remember, but in the early days of TikTok, like the interviews with the girls were real popular, right? So we were basically going out, asking interviews with like a clever punchline, kind of at the very beginning of that, if I'm being honest, like very, very early in that. So getting interviews, uh, asking girls questions, sometimes tongue in cheek, some of them inappropriate, some of them like, you know, funny. It was it was a variety. We were kind of testing. We were also jumping on a trend. You know, of the band City Girls, it was like a city boys play like that, truthfully. And so we were jumping on that. And I think so. It was, it was a bit trending. It was like on topic with the audience that's on TikTok. And before we sold them anything, we were just posting funny content for like three months. And if anybody has ever priced out 100 million views and what that costs these days, we're talking about like bigger than a Super Bowl commercial, right? So being able to drive that organically had me just like geeked out as, as an Amazon guy that's like always trying to drive traffic. So what we were doing was essentially posting, watching, assessing which videos worked and which ones didn't, picking the best of those and then doubling down on that. And one thing that we stayed committed to was not over-professionalizing our work. So we didn't buy a better mic. The mic was kind of scratchy. We didn't like bring in a bunch of uh, outside influencers early on because we wanted to make sure that the like the community knew who the brand was, which was this influencer, this personal brand versus like confuse it with a company of guys. So we just kind of chose him and we just delivered value. We were posting basically every single day. I think in a perfect world, if you could post two or three times a day, that's a home run. But most of us don't have the time to do that. But you're posting daily as often as you can. Pick the ones that work and put those aside. Put those in a bucket of winners. Like You're going to know which ones those are, the ones that are getting a lot of dialogue in the comments, a lot of shares. You're not just looking at likes, but you're looking at shares. You're looking at comments. You know, post, have a couple other shadow accounts that are essentially just made by you and the brand. Name them something like a fan page of that person, whatever. Comment on the original post, pin that, pin that comment, make it about what you want people to engage with. Like be clever like that, come up with ideas. You can stitch to it if you want to start some dialogue, but ultimately posts like this, pay attention to what's working. And if you want to go the ad side, you grab those ones that are working. And then at the end of them, you make sure there's a call to action. Read my book, sign up to my newsletter, join my telegram, follow my brand, follow me on Instagram, some kind of call to action like that. That's the difference in an ad versus just an organic post is you kind of have this ask at the end. And ultimately, if you're running ads, two to three weeks to your website or your TikTok shop, after that, you should be pretty dialed in. I think with your creative, give each of them a little bit of a chance and pay attention to the results. If you're going the organic side, I think eventually you get to a point where unless you're just going to be the personal brand forever, 
you start reaching out to people that can also represent the brand well. And I, I loved Mina's first suggestion of getting a couple of them on retainer and just having them post daily. You know, that goal I said of posting three a day, you hire three, three creators to do that. Sometimes if you want to be super creative, something I did is I have a big warehouse, a big office here in Kansas City, Missouri. I give space to creators to use in exchange for some videos. So, you know, there's creative ways of doing stuff if you're on a budget, if you're tight. Hey, they get to use all this space. They get to use lighting equipment I get. They get to use the studio I've got. Um, I'm in a podcast studio here. No one's used that yet, but I've offered it up. Basically, to get creators to come in my space, I get to meet people all the time. I get to use them for sometimes for free if I'm trading them basically space. And you're just kind of trying trying to constantly test. And what I can say is don't put yourself in such a system, whatever you do as a brand, don't put yourself in such a system that you don't allow yourself, your team, or your creators to be creative. Because at the end of the day, I think that's what works best on TikTok and TikTok shop like we're talking about is creative videos, whether they're funny, educational, demonstrational, a show me a how-to, a technical, a baking video, whatever it is, it's giving value. It's creative. The best ones are creative at the end of the day. That's the best advice I can give. I love it, man. I appreciate it. And guys, I'm going to put Drew's links in the description so you guys can hit him up and ask him for advice. He's obviously very knowledgeable. And I made another video here about TikTok that I highly recommend you guys watch. If you like this video, please subscribe. And in the comments, ask any questions. I'll make sure to pass them on to Drew so he can answer them for you. Peace out and see you in the next video.